Hello everyone. Today we're going to work on a 15 inch MacBook Pro. It's a mid-2010 model and we're going to try to uh, deal with the GPU kernel panic problem where the, the computer just uh, shuts down and starts back up just without warning. Oftentimes you lose what you've been working on and so we're going to attempt to do that as well as put a new battery in it. So here we go. I'm going to flip it over and start removing the back cover. The screws on the back of ours are tiny little Phillips screw heads. Uh, I found a battery online and the seller also offered a new set of screws so I thought that would be a good thing to have. Screws from here on around to here are all short ones, same size. These three back by the hinge are a bit longer. When you remove these screws it's really important to Keep some pressure on your screwdriver because they're easily, especially with cheap screwdrivers, and you can strip the heads out pretty easy. So, all right, that's I believe all the screws are out. We're gonna open up the back. Okay, we're opened up here. I'm gonna take the battery out first. It looks like there's three screws: one here, one here, and one under on mine, a piece of label right there. And then uh, the plug is right here. So you just take a little prying instrument and you back that up a little bit. You can lift the battery uh, by the tab. And then the battery slips out from underneath these. So that's what you're looking at, a uh, little plug unit. Okay, we have the battery out. Uh, first, the take out this left hand fan. Uh, it has T6 screws. What I do is tape a piece of paper to a work surface and label where all the screws I take out go. There's a uh, connection there and I believe it's a lift out. So you put something plastic pry tool and out that comes and we do the same thing with the fan here on the my right if you're shaky like I am be careful not to drop them use a magnetic tool really makes it nice the, the fans are configured just a little differently so uh, this one has a locations a bit different so it might help with putting them back but again anything you can do to keep things in order will help you especially if you're new and a novice at this like I am we're doing these videos just to kind of encourage regular regular guys if they want to try to fix something and they don't have the money they can take a chance and do it we make no guarantees though and what you do to your your computer is is on you uh, next thing we want to remove is this. It's going to take a Phillips head. Uh, by the way, I didn't make it clear on the uh, the battery screws. Those were a Y-shaped driver, and it's easy to get that confused. Phillips head has four four faces. A Y shape, just three. There's two examples. I don't know if you can see that, but you can see it with Phillips and the Y one are different. So watch that. You'll uh, get frustrated trying to force a Phillips screwdriver into a Y-shaped screw. Okay, and after we have that cover off, there's two connections under it. Uh, I think this one is the uh, keyboard. This is the trackpad connections, and one over here is a battery life connection. That one. I'll do first. It just lifts up. It's just a press in there. This one has a little lever. 
that you, uh, it's really tiny. Sometimes a magnifying glass really helps. And you lift that up, see that? And then that allows this to come out. And then this trackpad one is another that just lifts up. Okay, and then one more connection over here we'll do this next. This connection I believe goes to the screen and uh, it has a little ribbon on it. You lift it up and it comes with a little wire loop and then you can just push it out of there. This has a ribbon on it. You can just carefully wiggle it out of there. All these connections. It, doesn't need to be said you have to be gentle with. Over here there's hard drive, speakers, DVD drive, and this one goes to the Wi-Fi and this is the uh, camera. So each of these you just can lift them up And the camera one backs out. There's little ears on it. I found if a guy can get on those, can just wiggle things out carefully. Like that. Okay. Okay, next we're gonna loosen, remove some T6 screws that hold the logic board. And I believe there's seven of them. Begin to lift out the board. Uh, there's this one connection here. We forgot it goes into there, but it pretty much came loose on its own. But uh, you may want to try to loosen that before you lift the board. And the board was a little sticky, as you, because there's another connection underneath, possibly to the microphone kind of glues. And then there's one more connection right here. And if you'll notice that it has one side has got brass showing or copper showing, that side was towards the board. And it just pulls straight out of that socket there. And so that's it. Our board is out. And Okay, so we got the board out. And the chip that we want to work on fix our problem is this little guy right here. You can see it's pretty tiny based on my little eyeglass screwdriver. So that would first thing we need to do is attempt to remove that. Uh, these are heat sinks for the fans that cool the microprocessor. Don't remove those. We want to be real careful not to overheat anything but the chip we want to remove. We're going to remove it with hot air and you know nobody laugh but I made an adapter to go on my heat gun to brings the hot air down to a little a little tube and uh, we're gonna give that a shot and see if that'll work it'll be on there kinda like that to uh, do the soldering okay I've set up with my heat gun that I've reduced down to a smaller diameter and I'm looking all this through a magnifying glass myself, a little set of helping hands I picked up at a, a very discount store, everybody knows. And uh, I'm going to turn my heat gun to high and I'm going to grab the chip with a, a pointy tweezer and see if I can remove it. So here we go.
Okay, we got the chip off. Took a little bit more time than I had hoped for the hot air. And you can see the back of it has two connectors and uh, has a little plus sign on it for positive and that was towards the, the heat sink. So you want to take note of that. We bought a new chip. I'll uh, give you the link and it's a little bigger and that's the idea I guess. And, a, and it has a side on it. It has a, a bar, some little lines there. That's the positive side on this chip. And if you'll notice on the back, it has three connections. You'll be using the, the end and the next one over as what's important to hook onto your plate. This one and this one. And I, like I say, I'll post the length where I bought this specially made chip, or at least it's offered. And so this is going to lay on there just like that. And uh, what I've done is um, tinted the plates with some, uh, some resin solder, electronic solder. So now we'll attempt to solder that back in place. Okay, so we replaced this chip here with this chip, putting the bar towards the heat sink, which is the positive side of things, I guess. And uh, it looked like there's clearance there, so everything looked okay, assuming we got a good connection and didn't uh, ruin anything with too much hot air, which is a very real possibility. So, um, again, this is do at your own risk. You can have this repair done professionally. I understand. So, and of course, everybody knows, you know, back everything up and all that good stuff before you work on your computer, but. Uh, we're going to put it back together. We're not going to tediously film all that. So we'll put it back together and see if the machine comes on. Okay, we've got the board basically back in. One little note, this connection here, there's actually a little bit of a lever on this edge you have to lift up and it makes those ribbon connections go in a lot easier. And that's the one we missed going out. It hooks right on down to this board. So watch that and don't forget the one underneath over here, back side of this area. It goes to the, well, I think it goes to this board here. Uh, so you got your one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those eight, they go down, except for this one you push in. And it, again, you can just push in on those little corners or something and it slides it in. Uh, this one here had the locking device. The, you pull over the ribbon, so get it in and make sure it's all the way in and then press that down. Everything should click together with very little pressure from your hands. So if you find yourself manhandling, you might not be where you ought to be. We're, we got our uh, seven board screws in. One here, two, there's one under here. Three, four, five, six, seven. And those are all in. I uh, put them in loosely. After they were all in, I went back and snugged them down. That allows you to have a little wiggle room so you don't end up cross-threading something or fighting a little screw. And then the two screws on this cover back in. And so we're down to uh, putting the fans back in. And I blew them out real good. I think I'm going to press the connection first, then drop the fan in. It gives you a little bit of a chance to maneuver things. There's another connection. Press it in. Drop the fan in. Okay, and then we'll place those uh, fan screws. And they were the T6 screws again. So we'll go ahead and place those all in, and then we'll come back here in a second. Okay, we just set the uh, battery, new battery in, made the connection here, put the plug in, and dropped it in. These are those uh, three-pronged. So then that's that in. Just look around one more time, make sure everything is good, all your connections are made, and then you put the cover on. So we'll be back and see how it starts up. Okay, we've got the back back on, and we're going to give it the first try here. Okay, we've got our desktop screen. The uh, real test to see if it can run a period of time without the, uh, the problem, and uh, we will do that and update you and let you know if we are successful in that. So, thanks for watching. I hope this helps somebody.